Uh, okay, Rod. So um, I'll let you go over the pricing uh, with your boss. I'll send all that over to you. And uh, you told me that your focus, your main focus, the biggest problem you're focused on with your sales team is you need to get them motivated and they need to learn how to follow up. So that's what I'm going to solve for you. So Grant Cardone's the number one sales trainer on the planet. What he used to do is he would actually come into your town and do those live seminars. They would be about six hours long. You, you would send your salespeople, you'd spend $500 per salesperson, and then they'd look, be motivated, they'd be jacked up, learn new closes, they'd learn how to follow up, and then they'd come back and, and you'd be, see the best follow up and the most motivated employees for about five days. They get a weekend off and they forget everything that Grant told them. So the seminars weren't having the, the lasting effect because training has to happen every day. So what Grant said is I'm going to write books and he's written five best selling books on selling and closing, follow up, motivation, being obsessed, 10 X. And then we found out there's this one little problem with books. Can you guess what it is? You don't read them. Nobody reads them. Average Nobody American reads. reads less than, exactly, exactly. Average American reads less than one book a year and your average salesperson, which is what you're probably dealing with a lot if you got to get them motivated, it reads less than one book on selling in their entire career. So Grant said, how, how do we get sales content in front of people, in front of sales teams every day? Well, we found out that your sales team right now is already on an online training program. They go to their smartphone or tablet, they log into Snapchat or Instagram or LinkedIn or Facebook or YouTube or Netflix, and they watch videos every single day. 50 billion videos are viewed online every month. The problem is the content they're watching actually demotivates them. They know about the latest shooting, uh, the latest scandal, uh, you know, what did Kim Kardashian wear to the club and some cats bouncing on balls? Like none of that teaches your people how to become motivated. It just sucks them into the vortex and they're definitely not learning anything about closing or follow up. So what we did though, is we sat Grant Cardone down. We shot over 1500 virtual sales lessons on follow up, prospecting, closing the deal, handling objections, being motivated. And then we cut them into short bite sized segments. The average lesson length is between three and five minutes long. And then we put testing behind it so that you know as a manager or as a sales director whether or not your people actually understood the material. Then we put it into a curriculum where they train. This is, here's, the, here's the pitch right now. They train 10 to 15 minutes every day on pure sales development. And that's what I want to sell you on today. 10 to 15 minutes of pure sales development every day for your salespeople and motivation. You see that number down at the bottom there, that 44,195,000? Yeah. That's how many lessons that we've delivered since we started Cardone University. So we have a very predictable result. When you have your salespeople train on our program, 10 to 15 minutes each day, you're going to see a, about a 30% increase in revenue in the first 60 days. That is our typical result. If I got you half of that result, is that something that you'd really want to take a look at? Well, yeah. Why, why wouldn't I? All right. Let's take, let's take a look at it then. So, Everyone's going to have their own login. Each one of your salespeople is going to have their own login, their own username and password. The reason for that is because the first thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to make sure they're training because if they don't train, the program's not worth anything. You can have the best gym on the planet, but if you don't show up and work out, it doesn't work. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you as a national sales director, this is going to be your favorite tool of the entire program. This is the accountability tool, okay? It's called the usage okay. report. You're going to come in here to reports, click on usage reports. Now, this is where it gets very interesting because you have 18 different salespeople, 18 different varying levels of skill, 18 different problems on any given day, and none of them are saying, Mr. Fox, you know what I need today? I need some sales training on motivation and follow-up. So right. since they're not doing that, let's find out what they need. 
So the very first line that you're looking at here, the first graph, is going to let you know who signed in and who didn't sign in. We want them to train the 10 to 15 minutes before they ever talk to their first customer. Just like the Golden State Warriors and the Cleveland Cavaliers, they, they work out and they practice before the game, not during the game. So you're also going to know on the second graph, you're going to know who trained, who did what you asked them to do, and then who didn't train. Who's like, you know what? I don't care what Rod tells me. I'm not going to do it anyway. Now you know who those people are. Also, the most important part is you're going to know after they took a lesson, they're going to have a test. You're going to know if they took the test. You're going to know if they passed the test or they failed the test, which means you're going to know what they're good at, and you're also going to know what they need help with because 18 different varying levels of skills – it might be motivation and follow-up for 90%, but the, the other 10% might need closing strategies. So now what you're going to be able to do is know exactly what each one of your salespeople need when they need it. And when a salesperson gets the knowledge they need when they need it, that is when they become motivated. That is when they go out there and close more deals because when they're certain, the client becomes certain. That's when you close more deals. What do you like best about the usage reports and the accountability? All of it, you know, the, the fact that, uh, you know, people that, you know, because right now I'm taking people at their word. I mean, I can, I can quiz them, test them on stuff, but I mean, I don't know if it's just like, you know, if what they're, if what they're training themselves on is being effective because, you know, it's like, Hey, I just didn't quite understand it. I need more help or, you know, this, are they actually going out and doing something that's beneficial to them for their, you know, to prep, prepare for that day. Or are you, they even paying attention? Yeah. Now you're going to know if they're paying attention. Also, what I can also do is I can make different teams. I can have the A team. I can have the B team. I can have Rod's team and I can have the Fox team. And I can email and text you the report Every morning, you don't even have to log into the system. 9 a.m. every morning, you get a text. Hey, these three people didn't do the training. These 15 people did everything I asked. Those three people are going to get an email from me making sure they know how to log in, their Internet's working, or if there's a bigger problem, like they're not doing things I ask them to do. Okay. Have you I seen like enough that. to make a decision on whether or not you want to bring this uh, to the owner? Oh yeah, he he would be in, he would be impressed uh, just because of uh, that kind of tracking. Okay, good. Let me show. I mean, we can stop right now if you're ready to take this to him, or I can show you a couple of different things on motivation and follow up. Actual the actual training. It's up to you. Yeah, I'd I'd like to see more. And again, like I said, Dave, I, I'm you know I'm just being as honest as I can. He's up at his lake house out in the middle of nowhere, so I don't – and he, he, what they're doing is he's building a new addition onto it. So, I mean, I couldn't bring this to him and turn around and have him – I am going to need to show this to him. This, I mean, this whole thing is going to – he's going to have to sit down and ask me questions about it. So, I'm not trying to be a difficult Exactly, and just, you know what? I'm just calling you the reality. No, no problem. No problem. I mean, I could – I mean, you and I could also just – hop on a jet, fly up there, and enjoy a little Wisconsin backcountry and show them the program face-to-face. -face. I'm okay with that. <laughs> All right, so when you show them this, okay, your salespeople now, they're going to log in from a smartphone, tablet, or computer. Okay, What we're going to do is we're going to give them a certification training path. We're going to take them from the beginner that they are right now we're going to move them into an intermediate and advanced and master certification. In fact, this is about two years of ongoing daily sales development where they're moving through the process. It's not just an activity. It's a process where they can actually watch themselves get better. And in fact, when they get a certificate, you can, as a sales director, you can print the certificate out, put it in a frame present it to them, round of applause, little reward for, you know, Starbucks gift card, which gives them the public recognition. And it also gets buy-in from the team saying, hey, I'm working for the right company here. They're rewarding people that actually go out there and do what's, do what's asked of them. All right. Yeah. Now, when you come in here, 
let's say we're in the, in the intermediate, look at this, follow-up. I've got follow-up strategies. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to have, this is the different content because you mentioned follow-up. First, we got to give them the facts of following up. Then we got to give them the follow-up basics. Then the mistakes that they're making. And then once they understand that, then how do you follow up the unsold customer? How do you use the follow-up tool? Different ways to follow up. I've got types of calls for the owner follow-up, how to ask for the referrals, how to contact someone for over 365 days without pestering them, actually adding value, advanced strategies, and then reasons why people don't buy from you. If your boss was on this call right now, which one of these do you think he would say, hey, my salespeople need some of that? Uh, I'm going to say there, you know, with the number of salespeople that I've got, that it varies, uh, between them. But I mean, if I can, if I could track better follow-up and to know that these guys are doing it, it's, you know, it's probably the mistakes that are they're making when they're doing follow-up. Exactly. So when was the last time you gave these guys 10 lessons on the mistakes that they're making? Um, I, I can't even tell you that a good answer to the question other than just trying to explain to them, you know, a good way to follow up and to bring value to the, you know, not just asking for the business. You have to bring value to the, your phone calls or your contacts. Right. Exactly. So now here's some mistakes. Number one, they never made the call. First mistake. You didn't even follow up at all. Then you didn't make enough calls. Then you don't call on a regular basis. Then you waited too long to follow up. You have a, a lack of variety in reasons to call. There's no clear purpose on the call. Just following up, just checking in, right? Uh, you're not leaving a message. They don't know that you called if you didn't leave a message. You're not collecting critical data for future sales. You're not asking for referrals and you're not organized to store data. Which one of these do your salespeople need today? I know they need all of them, but which one really popped out to you? Uh, I'd say not even making the call. Yeah, or never made the call. So now what's going to, they okay. never made the call. What's going to happen is Grant is going to pop up. This is a two minute lesson, two minutes. There's no flux. This is exactly what they need to hear. All 18 of them can get this lesson before they ever even get into the office while you are spending time with your family, having your breakfast and getting to work early. You never have to deliver this content to them. This is going to supplement and enhance everything that you're going that have going on. So Grant's going to tell them, look, 48% of all salespeople never even make the call. So if they listen to this and watch, they're only going to retain 20% of the information because they're being distracted by everything else in life. So we put it in a notes tab. Now, when they click on notes and they take notes, they're actually going to retain up to 65% of what Grant's saying, which is the point. The point is not to watch videos. The point is to be able to apply the knowledge. So they can't skip the video. They can't push fast forward. And if they just push play and walk away, you're going to know because, bam, as soon as this is done, we're going to test them. Every two minutes, did you pay attention? You click on start, there's a 60 second clock, 60 second clock on each, uh, on each question. If they click on the right answer, I get the green check mark. I feel good about myself. Second question, oh, I got the right question again. That's awesome, I love that. But if I wasn't really paying attention, because I'm only, I'm only gonna be tested on the last two minutes of training, and I get one question wrong, I get the red X and I fail the test. This is, this is not high school where an 80% gets you a passing grade. This is the real world. In a real world, if you don't close the deal at 100%, you don't get paid. You don't bring money back to the company. The company has to fire you. You go home, you get evicted, you live under a bridge, and America fails. Yeah. That's how important it is to close every deal. And that's really what happens. Because salespeople drive entire economies. So what we're going to do is we're going to give them one more chance to retake the test right now. Retake it immediately before anything else. It's the same test. Questions are in different order. If they pass at 100%, they're admitted to the next lesson. 
If they fail one more question on the second time, no matter which question it is, the program shuts down. It stops. It sends them back to the beginning of the lesson they just watched. They have to rewatch the lesson, retake the notes, and retake the test until they get the information. Okay, I like that. This ensures the learning process. What do you like best about that? Well, that you can't fake it. You cannot. I, I like that. I, I like that. Now, you what know, if, <clears throat> you're either learning it or you're not. Exactly. That's it. And you know, because if they had, if they failed one question on the test, guess where that shows up? It shows up in their reports. Yeah. You know, you know what they failed, when they failed it. You know, you, you even know when they're training. Test shows up that they took it at 10 a.m. Like, what are you doing at 10 a.m.? You need to be on calls. You don't need to be training at 10 a.m. You need to be working at 10 a.m. Right? Yeah. Now, right. what if we did this? What if we get? What if we just did all your follow-up for you? Your people didn't even have to think. Yeah, we trained them, but we just did all your follow-up for you. This is the follow-up tool. This is not a CRM. Because the CRM is going to say, hey, Mrs. Jones, uh, her, her basement needs this, and this is her phone number. But it doesn't tell you what to say on a follow-up call, which is why your people don't follow up, and they're unmotivated because all they say is, hey, hey, Mrs. Jones, just following up. You, you ready to do business? That's not follow-up. So now they're going to come in here to the follow-up tool, and Grant is going to tell them exactly what to do. You ready to follow up? You got a customer? Don't know what to do? Let's get busy. Pick a day. So now they're going to actually pick the day of follow-up that they're on. Is it day zero? Is it day one? Day two? Day three? Day four? Day five? What day do your people usually stop following up because they don't know what to do? Um, I'd say you probably have – day five is probably – I would say they – probably stop following up day five yep okay good so how about we go to day five grant's gonna pop up got a customer don't know what to do let's get busy pick a day so i'm just gonna pick on day five it's day five okay. you're gonna use i thought of you when i saw this i want you to find some piece of data anything some piece of data that causes you to think about this customer. And if you're anything like me, you're thinking about that customer every day. This is day five. So I know you're thinking about him right now. He's not going to get lost. She's not going to get lost. So just send him an email. Or you could make a direct phone call. You know I like those better. Or a text. I love those. Thought of you when I saw this. And include a link to some information, an article, something that caused you to think about this customer. Try that today. Look, if you don't know what to do over the next four or five days, check back in with me. I'm going to have a specific call that you can make tomorrow or if you want to give it a little breath on the 10-day contact. Pick a day. So now what this does is there's no test after this. This is a one-minute lesson. Okay. Okay. This is exactly what they need to do on day five. Hey, Rod, just saw this article on – uh, that Grant wrote on sales training. I shot it over to you. It's in your inbox. In fact, I texted you the link. Give me a call when you see it. Love to see how else I can help your company speak with you soon. So I'm going to email that to you. I'm going to text it over to you. And I left you a voicemail. That's three touches on day five. And not one time did I say, Hey, did you sign that contract yet, Rod? Just following up. But I yeah. gave you something. You could even use that for, you could even use that for a sales meeting for your team. Right. Tell me what you like best about that. Oh, it's just reinforcing the fact that the money's in the follow-up and that they're not doing it. They're not making what their potentials are. It's because they don't know what to do. Right. It's they, they don't know what to do. And if they, let's say they just, they just, they just need motivation. I'm going to come in here to a hundred ways to stay motivated, which is what you told me. A hundred ways to stay motivated. I've, now, what do they need help on? They need potential. 
personal development, time management, self-esteem, staying energized, purpose in life, magnetism, goals, 10X, follow through. Which one do they need today? Uh, huh. <laughs> well, I got a varying bunch of people, you know, it's uh, goals, I'd say. Exactly. Exactly. So that means you got something for every. You're like, man, some guy needs potential. Some guys need to stay energized. Some of them need goals. That's why everyone has their own login. They can come in and get what they need when they need it. So now I'm, I don't have, just have a raw, raw session with Grant. He's going to give me actual strategies on how to be motivated. So I'm going to write my goals down first thing each day. And Grant's going to explain how to do that. Then I'm going to write my goals down before I go to sleep. What do I want out of this life? Most people, most people only write their goals down one time, January 1st. I write mine down twice a day. Who do you think is going to win that battle? Then you have a 30-minute finance meeting with your family. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Have a monthly goal meeting with your family. Identify what you're passionate about. Picture what you want at the end of the deal. Focus on the future, not the past, and keep images of what you want in your environment. Which one of these do your people need today? Which, which one do you need today, Rod? Um, I, need, I, I like that idea of writing goals down again before you go to sleep. I, I try. I have Let's a table in front of me. About that. Write your phone down again. Say that again. Yeah. No, I was saying because I, you know, I have my day book and I write down what I my goals are for the day, but I don't write them down before I go to bed. That's an interesting thought process. Let's see what Grant has to say about that. Again, before you go to sleep each night. Look, this is my trick. I write them down in the morning. I write them down at night. Before I go to sleep at night, I'm going to do this. I might write two lists down. Who could I contact? Remember that one? Who could I contact that would change my life? And then what are my goals? What are my targets? What are my lifetime objectives? You want me to take it to a freak level? Hey, what are my objectives over the next thousand years? Huh? Want to get excited? Want to start stretching yourself beyond good and mediocre and average and the way everybody else thinks? Start really, start really projecting into the future. Notice what I'm doing here. I wake up in the morning and I write my goals down. I'm not talking about what I'm doing today. I got that handled. That's done. That's in the schedule. I'm writing my goals, my lifetime goals, and maybe even longer, okay? And I'm like, oh, man, I got a lot of work to do. I got to go. I'm motivating myself. But nobody else can do this for you. You know, if, other, if you're not doing these things I'm telling you about in these 100 tips, then somebody else is always trying to do that. They're trying to push you along. Management, don't quit, quit doing that with your people. Push them, shove them, and make them write their goals down every morning, every night. <laughs> Whoa, that was a pretty powerful one to pick there, Rod. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Have you seen enough to make a decision? Or whether we're going to Wisconsin this weekend? <laughs> well, I'm not going to Wisconsin, but uh, no, I, I, you know, this is the kind of thing that, uh, you know, uh, I really, I know my boss is going to be interested in, in seeing, so. Okay. What's his name? Tim Hetty. Tim Eddie? Hetty, H-E-A-D-Y. H E A D Y Tim Hetty. Okay. Well, um, well, you know, I've got a, <laughs> I've got a year's worth of follow-up. <laughs> you know that. <laughs> oh, yeah. I hope I don't have to yeah. use it all on you. Um, oh, you no. think he's going to be um, more interested. You think he's going to be more interested in the, uh, the 12, 24 or 36 month pricing? Well, I mean, obviously, uh, that's a decision that I can't make for him, but I mean, obviously, you know, at one year, you know, I don't want this to end, you know, it's the kind of thing that's yeah. always an ongoing process. As long as, you know, this kind of, this kind of sales training, uh, you know, continues to grow, uh, you know, and, uh, that there's obviously more information available for guys that are here for more than three years, you know? I don't, I don't see this as like, yeah. a, well, there's a final graduation certificate. Thanks for spending three years of your time and money with us. You know, I want, I want this to always be refreshed. You know, that's the kind of thing that, you know, in a business orientation, which you understand that, 
you know, it can't, it's got to be ever evolving, you know, because when I first started here, you know, uh, we were using the yellow pages, uh, you know, yellow pages are dead, you know, in marketing. Uh, I, I used to scratch out all of my contracts. I had to hand write them and I used a little drawing tool, uh, to be able to make them look nice. Now everything is computer uh, CAD driven, you know, to present a, a very professional contract. And so as long as, you know, I know, uh, in the position that I'm in that things are always being, you know, refreshed, re revisited and, you know, added to, you know, that that's the kind of thing that, uh, I want to be able to bring to him because, uh, you know, that's, you know, this, this, this company is going to be here long past three years from now. I mean, so for me to sit and say that it's beneficial, um, at the, at the three year pricing, you know, that's, you know, obviously there's, a, there's advantages in that, you know, getting that price, uh, you know, that price break. So. Yep. Well, I've also got other things that I can offer you when it comes to the, doing the, the, the three year deal, like a, a ticket to our sales boot camp, our business boot camp that's happening in July. So, uh, you, you think we're going to be able to get something done by the end of the month so that, so we can get this done uh, without moving into next uh, next month's pricing. Uh, Tim will not be back until the end of the week. He, uh, so I mean, I can't. I, uh, it would be June first, uh, whether that you know is a, a price break day or not. I, I just cannot. Uh, you know, if he sees the value in it, you know, the money the money to be made, the price difference, you know, is does, yeah. He's always got, he's always got this. Yeah, but you know, if it's you know, if it if it pays him back tenfold, you know, it's worth the investment. So. Okay. So uh, do you? What I what I what I'm getting from you is you don't want to reach out to him while he's out there at the lake house. No, huh? and I you know that's one of the things we we here at this company when a guy's gone we let him be gone unless it's an absolute. And you know, not that this is an emergency, but if the building was burning down, he'd want to call. If I was talking to him about okay. something like this, he would say, just wait. So, Got it. All right. Well, he'll be back on Friday. Do you want me to want me to give you a call Friday morning? Uh, we can put something on the calendar now. What's the best way to move forward? I tell you what, can I, can you give me a call like at, hang on. Let me look at my name. Um, can you give me a call at one o'clock that day? My time? Two o'clock here. Uh, yeah, yes, I can. Okay, I'm going to give you a phone number to call me on. It Go is ahead. 515 577 2371. Got it. Uh, is that your cell? No, that's my office number. And it will, if, if I'm not in, it will forward to my cell. And if I don't answer, it's because I'm in an appointment doing a ride along with one of my sales guys, but I'll call you right back. But right now I'm going to pencil it in. The All, right, perfect. All right. Um, it, if I wanted to, if, if I wanted to text you over something right now for your guys on follow up, and you can text it to them, what's the best number to text that? Um, that number is 515-204. 9104. And I'm going to send you a care package old school way, the old school way through the ah. mail. What's the best mail address mail. to the, uh, to the business over there? Yeah. Okay. It's Midwest basement systems. Attention Rod Fox at 5153 Northeast 17th Street, Des Moines, Iowa, 50313. Five, give me the zip one more time. 50313. Got it. 
Okay, excellent. Uh, 1 p.m. on Friday, I'll give you a call. I'm going to text you over something right now as far as follow-up. And uh, okay. look for the mail. I've got something, a care package coming over to you. Let's put something together. Let's kick this off and, and, and do something uh, for your guys in June. Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to. So, and then can you send All me right. that, uh, record, can you send me a copy of the recording? Because that's really what I'm going to go through with Tim. Absolutely. And just so you know, uh, here's somebody that I'm doing business with that's, I think that they're, they're, they're doing pretty much what you guys are doing. Have you heard of AccuLevel? Out of Indianapolis, yeah. Yeah, so they hooked up with us. I'm going to also send over this case study. Um, first full month on Cardone University, AccuLevel hit $1.37 million for the month. They beat out their best month in company history by $270,000. Right. Now, $1.3 1.3 million might not be a lot of money to you. You might be a lot, you know, a lot bigger company than that or a lot smaller. The what you want to pay attention to is after 30 days, they hit the best month in company history by an excess of a quarter million dollars, which paid for their entire program four times sure. over. Nice. In the first month. And then they, they had 35 months where it's just free training now. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, yeah. And they're doing you know, the, same, and that's, the same thing you guys are doing. Yeah. No, and that, that's just it. I mean, you know, that's the one thing that, you know, Tim looks at is, you know, is there value to us as a company? If there is and it pays for itself and then pays us back, you know, the investment is always worth it. So, you know. But I, I do want I, I want to show him what you showed me on that recording, uh, and uh, that's the best yep. way I can I can bring the information to him. But you know, so all right, all right, I'll 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 send it over to you right now, and then I'll give you a call on Friday and expect all that all that follow up. I'll show you the follow up. <laughs> all <laughs> right, good. I appreciate it. Thanks. All right, talk to you Friday. Take care. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.